Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum Today. We've got a couple of great interviews coming up over the next few minutes. It's going to be a wonderful time together today. Always great to interview people we haven't seen in a little bit and also meet new ones. So you're not going to want a minute, miss a minute of what's coming up for you today. That's right. Don't forget, if you are not on our mailing list, we want to get you on the electronic updates. Definitely send us your email to info at kazq32.org so you can be included. to have with us today Shelly Rep, who is the Executive Director of New Mexico Dream Center. Shelly, good to have you back with us. You were with Thank us you. a few days ago and it's good to have you back, kind of following up on a new topic today. Yes, absolutely. I'm so glad to be back and kind of tell you a little bit more about what we're doing at the Dream Center. Well, we're looking forward to that. And of course, one of the issues facing New Mexico, but especially some of our populated areas like Albuquerque, and not only Albuquerque, Santa Fe, some of the other uh, communities that are larger, Las Cruces, exactly, yeah. is homelessness. Yeah, yeah. And so today we want to talk about homelessness and how it impacts youth. Start us off, that's not really a, a thought that we often have of homeless youth. Most of us encounter probably adults. Correct. Is there so, such a thing as a homeless youth? There is, there is. And that's um, kind of one of the hidden populations, I think, around homelessness that people don't realize are there. They're so used to seeing a chronically homeless person, and so they have this picture in their head of somebody who is um, older and addicted with a lot of mental health uh, complications. And what we really have found is that we've got a really large population of young people who are homeless that are on the streets. And I think it's worth the effort and worth the time to try to address these issues for these young people. You know, you mentioned something that just kind of hit me. You, you said that a lot of these folks have chronic mental health issues. Correct. Is it because they had chronic me mental health issues or what did drug abuse contribute to chronic mental health issues. I'm sure there's a, probably a mix in there. Right, but right. But the drug use cannot make you more mentally stable, does it, it? It does not. It does not. And in fact, what we have seen with young people and what we've done with that is that there's kind of like um, this this culture and this life that develops. So the longer you're on the streets, the more likely you are to use uh, substances. I mean, it, you know, you have to think about it. It's 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 crummy to be on the streets in Albuquerque, right? It's not great. It'd be crummy to be on the streets anywhere. Anywhere. And so you end up numbing, which ends up, you know, contributing to addiction. That leads to another addiction, another addiction. What we've seen is really, if you can kind of intersect with this young person within six Six months, we've seen a great turnaround. But the longer they're on the street, the more likely they are to continue down that path. So with our chronic adult population, uh, oftentimes these are people who have been on the street for years and years and years. How did you start working with homeless youth? How did that process begin? Well, you know, so the last time I was here, remember we were talking about human trafficking because that's what our core program was, was working with survivors of human trafficking. Well, in 2017, we had three clients in our human trafficking program who were all, were all very young adults, between 19 and 23 years old. Yeah. All three of them had been um, young girls who had been homeless. Two runaways and then one girl who had been kicked out of her home. And so the term for that would be a throwaway. All three of these girls had been picked up by traffickers and ended up being in these exploitive situations because they didn't have resources, they didn't know where to go, where to turn to, and so they ended up being preyed upon by traffickers. And it was after that that we saw these really um, strong ties mm -hmm. between the recruitment of traffickers on this homeless youth population in our city. How many young people are in that situation? You know, in, when, in the city of Albuquerque when we look, or the central New Mexico area. Sure, sure. So if you're looking at homeless youth, there was recently a report called the Pyre Report that went out, and they estimated that um, 
There are between 1,500 and 2,200 young people at any time in Albuquerque through their point in time reports. What we would look at is we would probably up that number to maybe up to potentially 5,000. And the reason we would look at that, yeah, it is a lot. That doesn't mean they're all here at the same time. But when you look at through the course of a year. Oh, okay. People maybe becoming yeah, homeless. Yeah, kind of. Uh, uh, Finding a place, becoming right. homeless, okay. Well, and one of the things is that um, homelessness, especially with youth, they're often um, transitory. And so you might have somebody who will go to Santa Fe and be in Santa Fe um, as a homeless person mm -hmm. in the summer months, but then come to Albuquerque in the winter months because our weather's a little bit nicer um, and because there's different resources in different places. And so in looking at something like that, it's a pretty large population. How does somebody become homeless as a youth? I, I, that's kind of mind-boggling if you come from right. a, a home where there's a parent or two parents. Right. And it's kind of hard to fathom being homeless as a young person. I mean, I, mean, I understand adults make choices. Okay? Sure. I mean, you know, sure. if you get involved in drug addiction, it's probably going to lead you to homelessness or has Very a higher good. chance. Very good chance. But how does a youth become homeless? So it is really the destruction of the family unit at some level. So we've had um, kids who run away, so a runaway. And a lot of times we think, well, just go home. You know, you're just kind of being spoiled or whatever. For a kid to choose to stay on the streets as opposed to going home, there's some pretty serious stuff happening in that home. We've had kids who are throwaways, so they're kicked out of their home and uh, they're not allowed. There's probably behavior issues if you get thrown out, I would think. Yes. Yeah, so generally there are. Um, there's also a lot of times with the throwaways we see, uh, that happens oftentimes with a single mom and a new boyfriend um, mm -hmm. that comes into the house. Uh, so that's what we see with a lot of our girls is that they've said it's, it's easier to be on the streets where we don't feel like we're being abused every day. And so we've got that. You've got families who have um, mom and or dad have fallen into addiction and they've lost housing. And so as a family unit, they are all homeless, but you also have kids who are in the foster system. And especially when they get to those teen years, um, our Child, Youth, and Families Department doesn't have great resources and services. Well, let's, and be, you see let's that. be honest, you know, a, a lot of teens become pretty rebellious. You 100%. Know, and especially if they don't have uh, fences of this and, and structure. And, yeah. and if with the breakdown of the family unit, there's, there's less structure in many. Cases. Absolutely. So absolutely. it's easy for kids to say, hey, I don't want to do it your way. I want to do it my way. And right. I think I've got a better way. So I would think that that would lead, especially if you've got other problems at home, right. the kids saying, I'm going to try something something different. Are they more vulnerable, though? Now they're, now they're out there. Yeah. Okay, they're on the yeah. street. They've left for whatever reason. They've been thrown away or they've run away or whatever it is. Are they, I mean, they're, everybody on the street, I would think it has some level of vulnerability. You know, yes, from absolutely. weather and elements and lack of food and food scarcity and all those things. But are the youth more vulnerable than even the others, the adults? They are. So if you think about it, um, there are multiple, and you know this, there are multiple services for adult homeless people. There are. There's, there's not as many services for young people. And because they're under the age of 18, they can't access the same kinds of public services mm, we that's have. That's true, isn't it? Right, so they can't check themselves into a hotel or motel, even if they're panhandling. They can't apply for food stamps, even if um, they would qualify for them. For them to get into one of the two youth shelters in Albuquerque, they can't even check themselves in. They have to be checked in by a parent or a guardian or CYFD, which is really hard if you're a kid that can't return home or you don't have contact with your parents. Mm -hmm. So essentially what we've done is we've kind of created additional vulnerability where then kids have to look and try to figure out a different solution. And another problem that youth have, I would guess, is they just don't have life experience. They, they don't. What, to do. <laughs> well, what do you do now? That's, that's how um, the, the three girls we talked with ended up in these trafficking situations. With one of them, she talks about how she was like scrolling through her phone, trying to find a place to sleep that night, asking friends, and this guy drove up and he's like, hey, do you want to go party? Well, getting in the car with a stranger is a horrible idea. Yep. But she was desperate. She didn't know where she was going to go. So she did, and she ended up in a situation that she could not get out of. And a lot of that is life experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know, people tell you don't ever do those things. And as you get older, you're like, absolutely. It's kind of like, you know, as you're, as you're a younger person, it sure would be fun to run around till late hours of the evening. And as you become an adult, you're like, no way. Right, I'm exactly. Not be out there Let me go anymore. home. I want to be in my bed. Exactly, exactly. Well, what does your agency do? How does New Mexico uh, Dream Center intersect? Yeah, so we have, um, 
we have a drop-in center that is specific for youth that are homeless. So chronic adult homeless people cannot access it. They have to be under they have to be under 21 years old, and our prime age, honestly, is 17 to 18 years old. Is really what. Uh, we work with. We also have an outreach program. So we do outreach um, three days a week looking for these young people. So we do outreach up and down Central Avenue, up and down Zuni, and in different skate parks, looking for young people who are um, trying to kind of blend in, trying to, trying to keep themselves safe, and offer them services. What we've seen is that in kind of this lifespan of homelessness, if we can intersect when they're young and help build that relationship, and help kind of steer them back into services, the chances of them becoming a chronic homeless person are a lot less. And if we can, you know, we know that, um, Pastor Franks, that the the complexity of the homeless issue is huge. Right. But if we could address our young people and then maybe by attrition, we are not contributing to that chronic population. Not adding to it. If we don't add to it, maybe that's one of the many solutions sure. we need, but that's sure. one of them. Well, Shelly, uh, information's been on the screen today to let people know how that they can uh, intersect with you and get Wonderful. involved as a volunteer. So I'd encourage you to look at the information that's on your screen. Of course, our guest today is Shelly Rep, Executive Director of the New Mexico Dream Center. And uh, if you'd like to volunteer, find out how you can get involved. Definitely give Shelly a call. Thank you so much. Thank you. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. we would like to really say thank you to so many of you who are actively helping us as we are working on upgrading equipment for production. Now, we made an order for some uh, camera equipment um, because they were telling us that the lead time was going to be as much as six, seven, <clears> ten <throat> months. A, a long time. We were mm -hmm. looking at it in March and they were telling us maybe not till December. However many months that would be. Nine months, I guess. Um, some of the equipment starting to, to become available, although not all of it. Now, the camera equipment that we're working to order is about twenty-eight to thirty thousand dollars. We've raised because of your faithfulness about nine, maybe we're approaching ten thousand dollars toward that. But we still have uh, a long way to go to be able to get that equipment in position. Your donations to the President Partners of fifty, seventy-five, or hundred dollars really helps us. It really helps a lot. So we would certainly appreciate you doing your very best and making those donations. Of course, Family Safe Programming is another great way that you can be involved. Sure, you can be involved with that at thirty-two dollars a month. And we encourage you to do that. Um, family Safe Programming is very important. You can visit us on our website at kazq32.org. Give safely there. Find your favorite programming guide. We have a program guide there. You can find your programs, new programs, or maybe one is switched and changed the airtime. You can find sure. it there as well. You can always call into the station, 505-884-8355, extension 101. And if we do not answer, leave a message, a detailed message. We will call you back. Or you can send in your donation with any um, prayer request or correspondence to Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast. Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. Remember, we are switching things digitally for our newsletter every yes. month. And if you'd like to be a part of that, you can call us with that email or email info at kazq32.org to become a part of that and stay current with everything going on here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. privilege to have back with us today Chris and Sonia Cleveland who are with under his construction right here in the Albuquerque area. Chris, Sonia, glad to have you guys back today. It's been a little while. It has been a while. Thank you so much. We're glad to be able to share with you today. I had an, a kind of a unique opportunity guys. I was uh, down off of uh, Central at a, uh, I don't know, I guess it was kind of one of these uh, antique thrifting places and look my wife and I and we looked over and we said hey that's <laughs> under his construction right next door that's right tell us a little bit about that we came across mm -hmm. your new location unexpectedly tell us about what it's all about so we finally after after four years after a fire we came back together under a new new roof where um, we're on central next to antiques and things 
and we came up, my wife came up with a new name for it. Because we have had, we, we, ha we hear plenty of bad news. Sure. And so through our daily routine, so we named our store the Good News Restore because it's not just about um, thrifting and restore purchasing thrift stuff, but the um, mission of Under His Construction is restoring lives through the power of Jesus Christ. And we do that with our men's home. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything that we do through our thrift store, our flower, floral store, our remodeling, our uh, moving, everything provides for our mission of under his construction. You know, I have to just commend the two of you because so many ministries uh, are dependent almost entirely on somebody giving, you know, direct giving to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you've really worked to generate businesses that provide people who need to learn um, work skills the ability to do that. Now, Sonia, I want to ask you today, you know, why, that's a great name. I, I love the name of, of your store. What does it mean to be a, a, a thrift or a, a restore business? Is that something where people are, you know, they find things or do you find things through estate sale? How, how does all that play out? How does that work? Well, yes, uh, we do partner with people in the community, having yard sales, estate sales. We have a few estate sales that call us, and we have to pick up all of the things that do not sell. And I'm, sure, I'm sure some of that's good, some of that's not so great stuff, right? <laughs> we do have to, yes, it's pick and choose, and sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we have to do a dump run. I imagine. But um, the restore, we're not only restoring furniture and reselling it, but we're restoring lives one person at a time in the community. As you have focused on this business, and it's not new to, to help the people that are in your, in your group home, uh, have you found that they, some of them really have a skill to restoring furniture or or uh, kind of putting things back together. I mean, you know, that, that's kind of a, a unique talent to some, do some of them uncover a talent they didn't know they had? It's, it's, really, it's really funny uh, watching the miracles of God because we receive a, a man in, maybe he comes from prison or out of homelessness. And before we know it, we start to pick up jobs that fit that specific man's Talents. Gifts and, talents and so we start to work with with men and women in the their specific career development trades um, if you will and build on what they know uh, so that they can reconnect with the community and get back to work get back to life yeah you know you have to have a job really to be able to to, to get into life and to, and to live a normal yeah. life to have a place to live and food it does. Eat. Um, I, I know that you folks have had and been involved with the floral arrangement business. Is that something that you still have, Sonia? Yes. Wow. The, the new facility, it has a, a nice training area for the women to learn floral design, wedding planning. We still have the wedding venue as well that's going great. We actually have a wedding tomorrow and on a Wednesday. A Wednesday wedding. Yes. A Wednesday wedding. And we also <laughs> do still the Riverwalk Boarding Kennel, which is boarding animals. And we, we could board about 25 animals, which were full again this week. So yeah, it's, right. it's an amazing charity enterprise where these women and men um, can take care of the animals, learn to care for them, learn to deal with the customer service, sure. learn to do the billing. Well, I tell you what, dealing with somebody's pets, you're almost dealing with their children, aren't you? A so lot of them are like children, better, yes. Be careful how you treat those. <laughs> we have to animals. calm them down. Like it's just like coming camping. They get to see animals. <laughs> just ha let them have fun. Well, we had a personal, wonderful experience with the, with you folks as they. We had a loss in our family, and you sent over a beautiful uh, uh, spray of flowers and things of that nature. And it was uh, it really ministered to the family in that time. So, as you're moving forward, what are some of the things that you're working on, Chris? Is the next steps of uh, uh, being a blessing in the community and also blessing the ministry? So, along with that, in that location, it's not just a thrift store. It's a large location, and so our How wellness center is it? It's twenty-five thousand square feet. 
That's a big spot. It's the old J.C. Penney's wow. from 1954. So really You've got a history there. It's really a great opportunity for our our charity enterprises to all come back together under one roof. But it's also our upstairs has our training center. So we we're all back together under one roof doing our morning Bible studies. We're doing our evening uh, training programs. Yes. Uh, guest speakers. Um, and, and so it's really nice to have that back together. So throughout the year, now we can start to focus on some of the more uh, community outreach programs that we do. Okay. Uh, we work really well with God's Warehouse as well as yes. New Beginnings and all of the churches we love to work with. Uh, we work with um, uh, 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 World Hoffman? Vision. Okay. Hoffman Town. Hoffman Town Church. Great. So we work, uh, anything that they need, we try to make sure that we can fulfill their needs as well. Now, I noticed that you've mentioned something uh, several times about the men. Um, how many men are you, are you able to minister to right now? Currently, we have 18 men in our home. In times past, Sonia, we've talked about the ladies. Are you doing anything with the ladies right now, or is that on pause? Where, where are things with the ladies? Um, we're not housing women right now. We've somewhat shifted to a okay. women's ministry that we have an actual graduate that's running a women's home. They have two homes, and so we're helping out with partnering with them for right now. Okay. We don't have a housing facility currently for women. Do you still do training for the women? Or yes, no? most definitely. Okay. So training is happening for men and women. Right. But the housing is only for the men right now. So it's really, it's really of God that one of the graduates of our program um, and somebody, a longtime friend of mine, um, in the way past, uh, not uh, our BC days, um, has opened a, a women's home called Frontline Resurrection. Okay. And so they house about 12 women. And Sonia works with them uh, with uh, new beginnings at the church, Great. as well as their training and their uh, treatment plans and uh, goals for their future Wonderful. recovery. Wonderful. Do you have any uh, special events that are coming forward in the next little while? Sonia does. Well, tell us about it, Sonia. We are having a fashion show at New Beginnings Church, so we hope you can make it. It's June 18th. It's from probably 5 to 8 p.m. All right. And um, it's called Dolls. Wow. What kind of Barbie dolls, but I don't really want to advertise Barbies, more God's dolls. All right. And so 5 to 8 p.m. It says the 18th of June. Is that a Saturday that or Friday? That is Father's Day weekend, and it's a Saturday at New Beginnings Church. Okay. So we got a little bit of time to plan for that. Not too much, about a month out. So that'll be coming up. The fashion show, does that feature certain things that the ladies you're working with are focused on? We will be featuring Frontline Resurrection uh, girls and also under his constructions, Charity Enterprise. We're going to kind of throw that into the mix. Mix the two together. Mm -hmm. So that's an event coming up. Is there a cost to attend? Nope, it's free to come. Okay, and that, so that's coming up really soon, about a month out. Anything else, uh, Chris, coming up in So the one other years? event, uh, July 6th, will be a hip-hop concert with uh, Brian Trejo, uh, Five, Santiago, some of the names in the hip hop Christian industry. Okay. Uh, where we'll be giving away 500 pair of tennis shoes. We don't have a venue locked in for that yet, but it's July 6th. So pay attention to things that are coming soon. Well, we certainly appreciate the work and efforts of the folks that under his construction, working not only with those who are homeless, but those who are coming out of some incarceration situations and giving them great training and getting them back on their feet. So I'm going to thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thank Brian. you. Toward the end of the month of May, and then June is just around the corner, we've got some great things happening at Evangel Christian Center where Ruth and I are the lead pastors. First thing I'd like to say is, man, we have been seeing more and more people coming back out to in-person worship. Mm -hmm. And we welcome you. Yes. Uh, we've had a lot of new friends who've been joining with us because they're looking for a church 
whatever reason, there's been a disconnect over the last couple of years. If you're looking for a church home, maybe that's you. Come out and join with us. This Sunday, Ruth, is Graduation Sunday. We celebrate the graduates this weekend. We sure do, and it's so exciting. We have, I, we have several from our academy that are graduating. I believe our class is, we have a class of eight this year. Yeah, from, from And it's Christmas exciting school. because the past, in the past two years, we haven't been able to have a graduation in-house, and so it was a little different. This year, we're having one, and we're so excited to honor those students who have worked so hard and are graduating. Great accomplishment, not only for them, but for their parents. It's wonderful to be able to, grad, to honor graduates, whether they're in, in, in a Christian school yes. or in the public arena, or maybe they're yes. even graduating with, from college. So all those things are uh, wonderful coming up. We've got an event where we're going to be going into the park and having yep. an outdoor service in the next few weeks. So uh, if you'd like information on that, definitely give us a call at 883-1300, area code, of course, 505. Mm -hmm. You need to have that area code anymore attached to it. And then in the summer, we've got things like BBS mm -hmm. coming. We've got camps coming up for yep. teen, teens and youth. Yes, so as you call uh, Evangel Christian Center at the number that Pastor just mentioned, you can ask for information on the dates for the camps, Vacation Bible School, and also for a kids camp and youth camp and we'll give you that information. Remember, we're here on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, and we'd love for you to join us. If you don't have a church home, please come visit us on any day, any Sunday, Wednesday, or Friday nights, Sunday mornings at 9 and 1045. We have two services on those days. Of course, Wednesdays at 7 and Fridays at 7 as well. We definitely just would love to meet you and to connect with you. Some of you will come in and say, hey, you know, I feel like I know you because we watch you on TV, and mm -hmm. that is a, is a great treat to us to be able to put the face to uh, maybe a name or to be able to meet you brand new if you've never had the opportunity at all. So definitely come by. We're located at the corner of uh, Montgomery and Jefferson, mm -hmm. 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast. We would love to have you come and to share with us. Until next time, have a great day in the Lord Jesus Christ.